That's a, ma a matter of uh, choice. You can either draw the hydrogens or not. We definitely have to draw the ethyls. And, and again, I would put these on the wedges of the dashes. They're supposed to be on the same side. The yeah, ethyls? Z, Z, same side. You're correct. I got that wrong. Same side. It doesn't matter whether you put the ethyls on two dashes or two wedges, because clearly if you flipped it, they would go from wedges to dashes here. these pictures? Yeah. Well, no, because the bromine is above. Since the bromine is above, the other substituent should be pointing down. So it really is best to show these pointing down. If I was going to show the hydrogens, they would also be pointing down. Since the bromine it came in... Does matter if you do both of them on wedged or both of them on dashed? The ethyls? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make any difference, because after all, if you took this and flipped it like this... As long as we stay... Mm, but they have to be on the same side. That's right. But you should show them both pointing down if you have the first bromine coming in from above. To me, the easiest way to do this is to first just draw the skeleton with the bromines. So either the, if the bromine comes in from the left, then the other bromine relaxes up and to the right. Or if the second bromine comes in from the right, then the first bromine relaxes up and to the left. And now I can put in the substituents. Well, over here, this bromine that attacked from the left must have pushed the ethyl group up. If I was going to, I could still show the hidden hydrogen on the wedge, also pointing up. And over here, uh, the ethyl group is still pointing down, whereas in this case the bromine came in from the right, so it pushed the ethyl group on the right up, and the ethyl group on the left is still pointing down. Now are these the same compound or different compounds? If we took this top compound and rotated it vertically, the like ethyls... If you took the bottom one and flipped it... Horizontally? Horizontally, mm -hmm. then the, bo the bottom ethyl would be facing toward you. Right. A horizontal flip won't work because it would put this ethyl on the wedge, where we would need it on the dash. And a vertical flip wouldn't work because, again, it would put the ethyl on the wedge, where we need it on the dash. So these are different. How can you get this skill of flipping and rotating things in your head to see if they're the same or the different? Only with lots of practice. You want to make flashcards of the cases that are difficult for you and just keep drilling on them over and over. Most people never build this skill, and the reason is they don't have enough flashcards and drills that they've, they've done on it. It just takes practice. So we really do get the two different products here. So again, I think the best approach here for a non-cyclic alkene 
attacked by Br2 or Cl2 is to draw the substituents on wedges and dashes and keep the bromines in the plane of the page. So we've done a bunch of examples of that here. So is this anti-addition or syn-addition? Um, anti. 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 And what's the part of the mechanism that explains why it's anti? Because the bromines are on different sides. The stair hindrance issue. If the first bromine is already above, there's too much stair hindrance above for the second bromine to come in from above. Okay, good. Well, we should definitely do uh, part E as well because cyclic is a little different from non cyclic. So let's do part E. So I've just been trying to convince you to keep the bromines in the plane of the page, but that was for non-cyclic alkenes. For a cyclic alkene, I would do it just the way you wrote it. I, now I would put the bromine on the wedge over here. And then, is this second bromine going to come in from in front or from behind? Um, from behind. Because the front is blocked by stair hindrance. So if we have the second bromine attacking the top carbon, then it should come in from behind. <coughs> and that leaves... On the bottom carbon, the bromine is in front. On the other hand, if the second bromine comes in from below, then the bromine will be on the dash below, and it'll be up over here. Now, are these the same or different? Um, that's what I didn't know. Um, I would say different. Do you agree? I have thought about it. I think they're different. Okay. If you flip it around, then you would have the top one on dash and right. the bottom. That puts you guys way ahead of oh, the game. Wait. Or maybe not so far ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're back in the game. All right. Well, 95% of students would say these are the same, but they're wrong. They think that you can just say do a vertical flip. But if we do a vertical flip, this bromine, if you flip it, will be on a wedge, and it still won't be the same as this one down here. Again, if you're not sure about this, you want to make this into a flashcard and just keep drilling on it. It just takes practice to tell whether two pictures are the same or different. So we really do get two different products here. So uh, this, uh, this halogenation reaction is actually kind of complicated as far as the stereochemistry. I've been recommending that when you're adding to a non-cyclic alkene, you should put the substituents on the wedges and dashes and put the bromine in the plane of the page. But if you are adding to a cyclic alkene, I would recommend doing it like this and put the bromine on the wedge or the dash and keep the substituents in the plane of the page because it's just too, uh, because you don't wouldn't normally put wedges and dashes on a ring, so we have to put this, the, the bromine there. Well, this is the exact type of problem that I think people get the most benefit out of, these problems where you have a lot of little variations on the same thing. So this is a good problem to go back and 